Hi, everybody. Reese Davis with you, bringing you the EA Sports NCAA Football 14 pregame show presented by Nissan. Innovation that excites. Old school versus new school. Power and ISO versus pitch and catch and get the guys out in space. These two teams have contrasting philosophy. One team loves time of possession. One team could care less about it. Who establishes the tempo it wants could go a long way toward determining who wins. That's going to do it for us here on the pregame show. NCAA Football 14 action coming at you right now. Fred Nessler and Kirk Herbstreit. near the Great Salt Lake. Before we head down to the field for the coin toss, we'd like to remind you this game is brought to you by Coke Zero. Real Coke taste, zero calories. Enjoy everything. Smith. The kicker's got the ball set up and we're ready to get this thing started. from the seven and he makes it out to about the 31 yard line you know Herbie for an offensive coordinator he's got to love this kid man's decision making abilities make him very effective against any defense he's ever played right? well defenses have to put pressure on him and not let him get comfortable if you allow him to scan the field he'll simply pick you apart if you can disrupt his rhythm it'll give you a chance of at least shutting him down Broncos have a player that's up for national awards. It's all speculation right now. You can talk about awards after you win them. He's got to worry about playing this football game. Second down, 10 yards to go. Ball on the 31-yard line. They'll bring him down around the 43-yard line. And for Sanders, that carry puts him over the 1,000 mark for rushing yards this year. What I've been impressed with all year long is the way this guy's earned those yards, oftentimes breaking two before someone finally brings him down. Just throws this one away. Great job by the defense of getting after that quarterback. And right now, I think they've got him with some happy feet. He appears to be a bit rattled. Second and 10. Ball on the 43-yard line. Here's a quick throw. Designed and executed pattern, but on third down and forever, it just wasn't enough. He's going to aim this one to the sideline, try to kick it out of bounds. They'll bring him down at the 22. Good job by the defense to force a punt on the first series. Boy, the crowd was loud and did their part. Now if they're able to move the ball downfield, they can take control of this game early. Now the offense gets ready to take their first crack at it. Scrambling around. Got the corner. He's taken off. Tackle the 39-yard line. Good yardage there on the scramble. Well, you have to credit the quarterback here. He's not the most fleet-footed guy on the field, but notice how he has the awareness and the composure to know when to tuck it and go. And as a result, he comes up with a big play. He's tackled at about the 49. Down at about 
the 43 yard line. So he keeps it and he gets a big first down. Quarterback made a very good decision here not to pitch. He saw a break in the defense and just hit it for a big game. Makes the grab and steps out right away. push there to get in the backfield and bring him down. And once he gets moving, there's no stopping him. This guy is so big and strong that he's almost impossible to block with one guy. From the 33-yard line, second down, five wide. Well-designed route and a confidently thrown football by the quarterback. You need those things to make any offense work. the kind of field vision you want out of your linebackers. They have to play well in coverage, and they have to be able to break up pass plays. So it's fourth down, and the offense is still on the field. They bring him down, and they'll take over on downs. Every drive's important in a tie game. I look for both sides to come out with some urgency. Nice pitch and catch for the first down. He's taken down around the 48-yard line. That makes it first and ten. from their own 48-yard line. First down. Here we go. They bring him down in the backfield. Sanders gets another carry up the middle for a nice game. That makes it third, and third down now, and they need to get it inside the 42. Throws, and it's incomplete. That brings us over the ground. Young is waiting for the snap. He's tackled the one yard line. They've got to play with some focus and smarts here. They don't want to make a mistake and suddenly find themselves. I think play action is a big part of this offense and what they're trying to do to them. It's, you know, they're running the football and they're mixing in some play action. And what that does is it freezes the linebackers and the safeties and puts a lot of pressure on them to have to be able to defend both the run and the play action. And as a play caller, when I know I can go to play action fast, boy, I feel really good about it's getting my quarterback in rhythm, slowing down the defense, and giving us a chance to make big plays. their own 40-yard line second down 
They'll spread the field with five wide. Tackled after a decent pickup. He's all the way home. Touchdown. It always makes you nervous anytime a defender tries to pick up a fumble and run instead of just falling on it. But man, did it work out for him here for a big time play in the score. And he converts the extra point. Let's go to the studio for this Reese Davis update. The Horned Frogs arrive at today's game, ranked 24th in the country. Back and forth these two teams go, neither one giving an inch. We could be headed to a photo finish. TCU has the edge, 17-14. All right, thanks, Reese. The kicker looks like he's ready to kick this one off. He'll return it from the three. And down he goes. 26-yard line. Boise State's defense is playing lights out right now and pitching a shutout. Yeah, I would not be shocked at all to see this defense be able to maintain this. I, I just the way they're playing, the attitude that they seem to be playing with, if they can maintain the energy and the awareness of this offense, there's a very good shot that they could shut this offense out. Throws it in a hurry. And they make the stop right around the 30. This is smart, efficient play calls. You don't need to make the highlight reel on each play. And a quick throw. And he's tackled the 37-yard line. seven-yard line. So at the end of one, the Broncos lead 7-0. Welcome back here. We resume action now here in the second quarter. Joseph on the inside handoff, Joseph and they hit him in the backfield. Call a loss of two yards on the play. That'll bring up third and two. So it's third down, and they've got about two yards to go. And he's taken down at about the 45. There was just no way anybody could catch up with that pass. That makes it second and ten. Second down, ten to go. Ball on the 45. In the shotgun and five wideouts. Tackle made around the 33-yard line. They'll line up with five wide receivers. He scrambled. They'll bring him down at the 32. Slings it. Tackle at the 21. Come out in a five wide set. And he's hit.
hit immediately. This isn't even the best example, but I'm going to tell you something. This young man is really getting better at running his routes, which is a truly underrated quality these days. He's going to try and scramble. And he's going to run this one in. Touchdown. No one could break clear, so the QB decided to run it in. You've got to like it when your leader takes things into his own hands, especially down inside the 10. Here comes the kicker to try to tie this game up. He makes the PAT. Let's get an update now. David Reese. The Horned Frog entered today's game holding on to a spot in the rankings at number 24. But a loss, and they're out. We've been watching this thing all day long. The Horned Frogs continuing to pound the rock on the ground and score a touchdown. The Horned Frogs are on top, 24-14. All right, thanks, Reese. Back to the live action here. Utah lines up for the kickoff. Smith from the two. At the 30. He's taken down at the 40. You always want to go in the locker room with momentum, so as we get closer to halftime, I think we'll see more and more create big plays. Here he goes. And he's tackled after positive yardage. That'll bring up second and three. Second down, and they're going to need about three yards to pick up the first down. Side and he's brought down to the backfield. Punting team's got to give their kickers some time. Brought down at the 29. This is the point in the game where you don't want to make any mistakes that give the other guys a reason to feel more confident going into halftime. six-yard line. It's second down. The quarterback in the gun. Empty backfield. Five wide receivers in the formation. Tackled for a loss. They come out in an empty backfield. Finds the freshman. That's a great tackle. 
Fourth down, and the offense is still on the field. Offense is their ability to spread the ball around. They're not afraid to go to their tight ends, their tailbacks, and in this case, their fullback. Nicely designed play. And he just gets rid of it. Brad, I just think this quarterback's got to do a much better job of being able to read that defense and make quicker decisions. And especially when the defense starts to get pressure, you've got to either get rid of that football or check it down or take off and run with it. He tackles him hard at the 14-yard line. The defense was playing run all the way right there, and it paid off for him. The Utes call a timeout. That's their second of the half. This is the 12th play of this drive. Fires quick out to the receiver, and he can't make the grab. They'll call on the field goal unit here. Utah could take the lead with this field goal. He gets it up. That's a tough break there for the kicker. It's hard for a kicker to stay loose on the sidelines. He isn't running around like these offensive and defensive players. And in conditions like this, the stationary bike can only do so much to get your body to heat up. You always want to go in the locker room with momentum. So as we get closer to halftime, I think we'll see more and more attempts to create big plays. Quick out to his receiver. He's tackled around the 37-yard line. This guy has that innate ability to get just enough distance from a defender to make a completion possible. You don't see it from every receiver, but this guy's got it. The sub package in there defensively in this five-wide receiver set. Throws complete. He's got space to work. Brought down around the 47-yard line. The Broncos use their second timeout. We've got a first and ten. Ball on the 47-yard line. Here we go. And he's immediately tackled. him hard at the 35. Man, it's an offensive lineman. This is the worst thing that you want to see. Is your quarterback not only getting sacked, but getting hit like that. Those linemen better pick that quarterback up and start doing a better job of taking care of it. The cavalry's coming. He's taken down at the 20-yard line. So at the end of the half, we're even at seven in this one. Hi, everybody. Glad to have you with us on the EA Sports NCAA Football 14 Halftime Show presented by Nissan. Innovation that excites. Keith Davis, David Pollock here in the studio as always to lend a little perspective to what just went down in the first 30 minutes. These two defenses so far, they've been everything they've been advertised to be. They've stopped the run. They've limited the passing game. They apply pressure at the right time. It's going to be hard to find holes to move the ball at all in the second half. Yeah, and sometimes it's really bad offense. And sometimes you can also look at those holes and they come open and all of a sudden they close really fast. And, and that's what you're seeing. A lot of guys that are really athletic, really fast. They know where to be. A lot of guys that you'll be seeing playing on Sundays. I mean, it's just a lot of talent to overcome and you got to be in the right position. But then you got to beat those great players that are also in the right position. So 
I, I expect more of the same, but, you know, which team can break through and make a huge play to, to take the other one, you know, off guard a little bit and, and make that big play. That's going to do it at halftime. Just about ready to start the second half. All right, you finish it up, bro. I'm going to get some of the cafeteria. I'm hungry. But, look, wait. Don't leave until you get my order. Brad Kirk takes the second half. Boy, I hope the second half's as good as the first. Just about set to start the third quarter in a tight one. He kicks it off, and he got all of that one. He's to the 20. Tackle at the 28-yard line. A lot of times you'll see teams start to clench up a little bit when games stay close well into the second half. You need to stay loose, keep doing what you've been doing all week in practice, and execute when it's time. Tackle after a decent run up the gut. He gets out to about the 44 yard line. and handling the ball and a great by the defense to jump on it. You don't want to squander any possessions, but maybe now is the right time to dip into your bag of tricks a little. Think about some gadget plays to catch the defense napping. So the question on this one is whether or not the ball carrier's knee hit the ground before the fumble popped loose. Well, after seeing the replay, it was apparent that his knee was down before he lost the ball. Yep. Those guys in the booth aren't perfect, but they got it right this time. And he makes it out to about the 37-yard line. job here by the defense of filling the gaps on the line. If you keep stringing out plays like that, you can really shut an option attack down. It's second down and 11 to go. Ball on the 19. Got it and brought down immediately. It's fourth down, and they're going to try to go for it. What a play to set him up with a first and goal. And he is drilled. 
the five. No that brings up second and goal. Things can get pretty fierce in this territory, but they look totally in control there. He splits the uprights with the extra point. So an 11 play, 68 yard drive, and a touchdown as a result. So our score. 14-7. The kicker looks like he's ready to kick this one off. He's to the 20. Tackle made at the 31. The Utes continue to get the defensive side of the football curve. Yeah, they've done a good job of building this lead and almost determined here to protect it. Let's see if they can hold on here for the rest of the way. This deficit can be easily overcome, sure. But they have to be thinking if they don't get something going on this series, the burden is going to be felt by their defense. Quick pass. And they make the stop right around the 36-yard line. Moss makes the tackle at the 36-yard line. That brings him second and five. Second and five coming up here. Ball on the 36. Looks for his tight end over the middle. And down he goes at about the 43-yard line. With the tackle at the 43-yard line. First down, 10 to go. Ball on the 45. Nice run, and he's brought down. That makes it second and six. It. He's in space. Tackle made at about the 35. That's a gain of five on the play. That'll bring up third and inches. It's third down. They're about the length of the football away from the first down marker. Man, on play action. Throws this one out to the left. Complete. What a catch. And he's tackled around the six-yard line. Personal foul. Face mask. Defense. Defense. So the offense will move a little bit closer. First down, and they are very close to tying this thing up. The offense needs something new down here in the red zone. And he's taken down around the four-yard line. The D lineman wasn't letting anyone by him that time. Yeah, the big fella did a heck of a job plugging up the hole where that play was supposed to go. That's three down and one to go. The Utes with a touchdown lead. Welcome back to the action here as we resume play here in quarter number four. Zips it to his receiver. Touchdown. The extra point to tie this game up. 
He makes the PAT. A quick update now. Here's Reese. Let's take a look at what's happening in the top 25. The Mustangs unleash their aerial assault and find Pater for a touchdown. SMU in front, 7-0. All right, thanks a lot, Reese. And it looks like they're ready for the kickoff. He's to the 20. Well, I'm sure the return man would have loved to go for six that time. At the very least, they've got to get into field goal range. Once they've done that, they can think about taking a few shots into the end zone. And you know, it's basically like we're starting from zero here in a one-quarter game now. Every possession is vital. They'll bring him down at the 31-yard line. And the halfback carries for a pickup of three. This linebacker's had a couple years of experience, and he's really solidified himself as a reliable tackler, as you can see from that last stop. Up the middle for a nice game. Brings him down. Quarterback all by himself in the backfield with five wideouts. Just throws this one away. From their own 40-yard line, it's second down. Five wide. Tackle at the 50. The running back carries for 10 yards on the draw play. out to about the 41 yard line pickens comes away with two yards on the quarterback keeper you're not going to be able to get by a sure tackler like this linebacker too often but out of the open he's tackled at about the 33 yard line the PAT. Looks like they're ready for the kick. Brought down at the 40. Boise State's got a really hard time establishing any kind of rhythm on offense. Yeah, we're so used to seeing that from them. They might want to go back and, and look at this film and try to study to see what they didn't do well because this is not uh, the type of offense you'd expect to see from these guys. Things aren't tied, but they might as well be. It's this drive that could really dictate the tone for the last quarter. That's a great tackle at the 44-yard line. First down. From the 44-yard line, it's first down. Nice run up the middle. Sanders comes away with five yards on the carry. 
That brings him second and five. Less than three minutes in the game. Quick throw, brought down at the 34-yard line. Gaining five on the play. That makes it first and ten. From the 34-yard line, first down. A quarterback in the gun with five receivers. And he's knocked down immediately after the catch. First down. So it's second and ten. Ball on the 19-yard line. Defensive coordinator anticipating this five-wide set, and he comes in with his dime packing. Pulls it in, and he's in the open field. He's knocked out of bounds. Right around the 14-yard line. And Kirk, that was a nice grab there. You know, it may be simple, but whenever you can gain solid yardage, you're doing something right. So it's fourth down, and the offense is still on the field. Waits. On the move, throws complete to the tailback. He's taken down at the 10. Both teams realize that when the ball is snapped, we're one play away from a very different ball game. Just under two minutes in the game. Gains his way to the 19-yard line. Great job by the running back, and that's a gain of nine. Boise State will take their first time out of the half. It's second down now, and they're just a few feet away from that first down marker. Nice run there. It's a first down. First down, and now they have an opportunity to run some more time off the clock. The Broncos call a timeout. That's their second of the half. They'll get him for a loss. You know, these backwards plays can have a psychological impact. It can damage a team's confidence if it keeps happening. From their own 22-yard line, second down. He's to the 40. Across midfield. Inside the 30. And he's finally brought down. Yard line. That makes it first and goal. down and they've got their eyes on that goal line.
Penalty markers down. They took too much time. And he adds the extra point. Reese Davis joins us in the studio with this update. Reese, let's take a look at what's going on in the top 25. This is a game we've been watching closely all day long. And for SMU, they can win their ninth game of the year today. The Mustangs are on top, 17-3. Two touchdown ball game right now, 28 to 14 here. Utah is lining up to kick this one off. He'll return it from the six. He gets out to about the 25-yard line. I'm sure there are a lot of fans out there hoping for a miracle, but I seriously doubt we're going to see one today. Under a minute left in the game. And they make the stop around the 41-yard line. You know, the quarterback that time took a big-time major chance by putting that ball up in the coverage. Now, the receiver made the play. They get a first down. And if you're a quarterback, you want to be very, very selective and very careful on how many chances you're willing to take. Caught with room to work. And down he goes around the 44-yard line. That's great execution. The quarterback made a nice throw, and the receiver was able to go up and make the play. He's going to air it long. And he stops the clock with a spike. It's second and goal. Ball on the six. Slings it. Puts on a move. Touchdown. Big, big touchdown through the air. And now it's a one-score game. Splits the uprights with the extra point. A five-play, 75-yard drive, and that's good for a touchdown. Brad, how about the guys up front? The offensive line giving the quarterback plenty of time to be able to read the defense and make the right throw. So our score, 28-21. They'll bring him down at the 45-yard line. First, right now, this is like a race, a foot race, and uh, I think the question is who's going to get there first. How about watching these two quarterbacks execute their offenses? I mean, they're flawless up to this point. Great execution and playing with a ton of confidence. I think you're right. It's going to come down to that last possession. The whistle hasn't sounded yet. They still have to snap the ball and make sure they don't make any mistakes. We should just see the quarterback taking knee right here, winding down the rest of this clock. He takes a knee. So that's going to do it. The Utes come out on top, 28-21. That brings this broadcast to a close. For EA Sports and Kirk Street. I'm Brad Nessler. We'll see you soon for another edition of NCAA Football 14.